Okay, let's talk about rate of reaction. Any rate is how quickly something happens. So we calculate any rate by doing the change in something that we're looking at divided by time. So what is this change in something we can measure in a reaction? We can measure the change in volume of gas made by having the gas made going into a gas syringe. We can measure the decrease in mass over time. That is if a gas is one of the products. So we just have the reaction vessel on a balance. We can measure the precipitate formed. We do that with our classic disappearing cross on a piece of paper underneath the reaction vessel. This one isn't fantastic though, is it? Because it's subjective. When does it actually disappear? And then that's only one time that we measure at as well. We also have change in absorbance. That's our colorimetry. If you want to see this kind of reaction done in real life, then click on the card and you'll see Mrs. Piers Dent doing that for Malmesbury Science. And finally, we can measure the change in pH over time. Now you should remember from GCC that rate is affected by temperature and concentration concentration if we increase that it increases the frequency of collisions because there's more of them in a certain space if we increase the temperature that's increasing the kinetic energy of the reactant particles that's increasing the frequency of collisions because they're moving faster but it's also increasing the likelihood of a collision resulting in a reaction we also say surface area at GCSE, but we don't really talk about that because we deal mostly with solutions and gases as well. More about that in a minute. Now, again, from GCSE, you should remember that we have activation energy in a reaction. Particles need to get over this hump in order for the reaction to happen. The more kinetic energy the particles have, the more likely they are to overcome this. But the thing is, is that reactant particles and molecules, they have a range of kinetic energies. They're not all going to have the same kinetic energy. So that means only some of them are going to be able to react. For a gas, this is a graph showing you how many molecules have various kinetic energies. We're most interested in the line at which the kinetic energy is equal to the activation energy. And that's usually about here. Of course, it's going to be different for every reaction, isn't it? So that means only the molecules to the right of this line on the graph are going to have enough energy to react. We call this the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. Quite often it's just shortened to the Boltzmann distribution. And what happens when we increase the temperature? Well, this graph, this distribution is going to change. It flattens a little bit, but that means that on the right-hand side, we have more molecules past the activation energy line. So that means more molecules have enough kinetic energy to react. So that means ultimately, we have a faster rate of reaction. Incidentally, for gases, we don't talk about concentration, do we? We talk about pressure. The greater the pressure, the more tightly packed together the molecules are. Catalysts, of course, reduce the activation energy. If we add a catalyst, that means that the activation energy line is shifted to the left because less kinetic energy is needed. So again, ultimately, that means a faster reaction because more molecules are going to have enough kinetic energy to react. So how do we actually calculate rate? Well, if we record the volume of gas produced or mass decrease over time for a reaction that has a constant rate of reaction, then we're going to get a straight line. Naturally, it's the gradient that gives you the rate of reaction. Make yourself a triangle. Of course, you can go right to the bottom, can't you? Make sure that your triangle's more than half the size of the line. And then, as per usual, do a change in Y divided by change in X. But reactions quite often have a varying rate of reaction over time. And so, therefore, we're going to end up with a curve, which, as you know, shows that the reaction is slowing down over time. It's the gradient of the line that gives us the rate again, but we have to draw a tangent if we want to find that out at a particular point. So put a cross on the curve, get your ruler, and make sure that it's just touching at that point. And then again, make your triangle, find the gradient. Now you've seen probably most of that stuff before, but this is where it gets a bit trickier. You see, concentration affects rate differently depending on the reactant. This can only be found experimentally. So here's our rate equation. Rate is equal to K, some constant, times the concentration of the first reactant, A, to the power of M, times the concentration of B to the power of N. What are M and N? They are the order with respect to their reactant. Incidentally, we say that the overall order is just M plus N. So what does order mean? Well, it tells you how much the concentration of the reactant affects the rate. The order is going to be zero if you change the concentration of a reactant, but it doesn't change the rate of reaction. In other words, that reactant doesn't play a part in what the rate of reaction is. The order is going to be one if you double the concentration of a reactant and you find that it doubles the rate. So we can say that the rate is proportional to the concentration of that reactant. The order is going to be 2 if doubling the concentration quadruples the rate, as an example anyway. That means that the rate is going to be proportional to the concentration squared. So orders up to 2 are all we care about at A level. 
Rate is always measured, by the way, in moles per decimeters cubed per second. You can probably see from those units that, therefore, it's telling you how the concentration is changing over time. The concentration of what? It's the concentration of the reactant. That's how we measure rate properly. The rate constant that is specific to a reaction is always going to have a different number, and actually it's going to have different units as well, depending on what the orders are. But it can change with temperature as well. One of the ways that we can do this experimentally is by carrying out an experiment, recording the change in rate over time. But if it slows down, then that means, of course, the rate is going to decrease. We're going to end up with a curve. If we change the concentration of a reactant, then that's going to change this curve, isn't it? So when we do that, it's useful to calculate just the initial rate of reaction by drawing a tangent right at the start of the curve. And we can see how the initial rate of reaction changes, and we can use that to figure out what our order is. If the rate of reaction changes, then of course it's not going to be zeroth order. We can of course determine that by comparing the initial rates. So if we carry out a reaction and we see how concentration's changing over time, how do we use that to find out the order? Well, here's our concentration against time graph, and we can see that the concentration, that is, of the reactant, is going down linearly. We saw this earlier, but that was for volume of gas produced, for example. So it's a straight line going up. This is the opposite. So we can see the concentration of reactant is decreasing linearly over time. So that means that the rate is not affected by the concentration. Let's look at the next one then. Here we have concentration decreasing over time, but the rate of reaction is getting slower over time, isn't it? Again, this is just a flip version of the curve that we saw plateauing earlier. So what does that mean for rate and concentration then? Well, we can see that the higher the concentration is, the steeper the gradient is. So that means the higher the concentration, the greater the rate of reaction. And so for this graph, it turns out, you can't just tell just by looking at it, you'd have to do some calculations. But for this graph here, we find out that rate is directly proportional to the concentration of our reactant. So that means that the order is one. And lastly, here we have a bit of a steeper curve going down. If we did some calculations, we'd find out that actually, the higher the concentration, the concentration has more of an effect on the rate of reaction. So rate is proportional to the concentration squared. So that means that the order with respect to x is 2. So we can say the rate of reaction is zero order with respect to x. Next one down, we can say the rate of reaction is first order with respect to x and then second order with respect to x. And this is probably the most useful part of this whole thing, the rate determining step. This is the step in a mechanism that determines what order a reaction is. What we need to remember is that the rate equation for a reaction contains all of the reactants involved in this special step. So let's have a look at this reaction. 2NO plus O2 makes 2NO2. Now the mechanism involved in this reaction involves two steps. First of all, the NOs combine to make N2O2. Then that joins with the O2 to finally make the product. Which of these steps is the rate determining step? Well, here's the rate equation for this reaction. Rate is equal to K times the concentration of NO squared times the concentration of O2. There's an invisible one there, isn't there? So the reaction is second order with respect to NO and first order with respect to O2. Which of these steps has the NO and the O2 in then? Well, it's not the first step, is it? Because it has NO plus NO, fine, but it doesn't have O2, does it? So it can't be that one. Let's look at step two, N2O2. Well, that was made from the NO, so that does count plus the O2, so yes, we have all of the reactants that are in the rate equation in this step. So that means step two is the rate determining step. Now we can actually use this to find out how many molecules are involved in the rate determining step. We can do it backwards, as it were. If you find out experimentally that a reactant is second order, let's say, that means that there must be two molecules of that reactant involved in the rate determining step. The rate determining step is a slower step in a mechanism. So I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please leave a like. And if you have any suggestions on what I could do next, then pop it in a comment down below or head to the Discord and pop it there. See you next time.